enforcement and moderate. Now, now to Little Rock, Arkansas, where, as you can see, President Clinton, First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton, and their daughter Chelsea are coming to speak to uh, a group of, a huge group of supporters, we expect. This is a very victorious night for William Jefferson Clinton. He has been re-elected. He wanted it to be a majority and not a plurality, as happened in 1992. He has a lot on his mind, a lot on his agenda. He has told the country where he wants to take the people of the United States. He told during this campaign how he differs with Bob Dole on certain issues. Tonight, in a gracious statement in Washington, Senator Dole wished the president well, said he would be supporting this president in the betterment of America, Ladies and, gentlemen, and said that he's going to of the United States, sit back and watch for a few days, and then he'll be speaking his mind. Meanwhile, the Democrats have one more thing to smile about, and that is that they have picked up a Senate seat, and that is in South Dakota. Tim Johnson, the congressman, has won the seat that belonged to Republican Larry Pressler. This is the, the one Democratic pickup we've seen tonight in the Senate, Ken Bode. Well, it's also the first incumbent to lose tonight. The only incumbent senator to lose is Larry Pressler. He loses to seven-term Representative Tim Johnson, who runs statewide in South Dakota much more often than Larry Pressler does. This has been a rem remarkable night, a good night for incumbents. Very little change, really, since 1992. Every state that voted for Clinton in 1992 voted for Clinton so far again in 1996. Every state that voted for Bob, uh, for George Bush in 1992 has voted for Bob Dole in 1996, with one exception so far, and that is the state of Florida. An enormous amount of consistency. Clinton did seven points better than he did in 92, but Dole did five points better than George Bush did. So Look at that. A lot of change. Look at that man in the center of the screen. Not this one. This is the victor, of course, President Clinton and his wife and uh, daughter waving at the crowd, but Al Gore. Al Gore, whose father was a United States senator. Al Gore, who served the cause loyally and very well. Al Gore, who is hoping to be his party's ticket leader and presidential candidate in the year 2000. What must be going through his mind? Well, I know what's going through his mind, Bernie. He's thinking right now, if this were England, I'd be the Prince of Wales. <laughs> That's what's going through his mind. Yeah. Well, if I may say so, this is a much more presidential presentation uh, than it was four years ago this night in Little Rock, Arkansas. When you remember that giddy scene with Hillary Clinton and Tipper Gore? doing a little dance and raising their arms in the air. They, this is much more sedate. We're hearing hail to the chief. It's, it has, in fact, it's, <laughs> if, if I'm not mistaken, that red carpet and that blue carpet and that seal looks a little bit like the White House. Well, yeah. he wasn't president in 1992. He had a couple of months to go yes, before he can't play. President. You can't play hail to the chief <laughs> when you've just won and haven't been inaugurated yet. <laughs> Here's Al Gore. I guess he's going to do the introductions. No Macarena tonight. Well, well, Maybe well, he well, might. Be the might. We'll we'll might. I'll tell you one thing that might be going up through his mind. This moment tonight, right now at this podium, he could be thinking this makes up for all those funerals I had to attend. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this evening. Before I present the president, I would like to thank the people who made this glorious evening possible. My wife, Tipper, who has campaigned from one end of the country and back again with flair and passion. My four children, Corinna, Kristen, Sarah, and Albert, who have filled our lives with love and our hearts with pride. I would like to thank my parents, who have set a standard of excellence and integrity in public service that has always inspired me my brother-in-law, Frank Hunger, a wise and trusted friend. On behalf of the president and myself, I'd like to thank Peter Knight, the best campaign manager ever, and a campaign staff that worked harder and more effectively than any in history. And on a personal note, I would like to thank the people of my home state of Tennessee for giving us a victory this evening. And may I say on behalf of Tipper and myself to a very dear friend, 
and on behalf of millions of families in villages throughout our land, a very special thank you to a woman who has faced extraordinary pressures with grace, dignity, and an unbreakable commitment to serving our nation, America's First Lady, Hillary Rodham Clinton. A few blocks from here, in the summer of 1992, then-Governor Bill Clinton asked me to be his running mate. It has been my great privilege to work by his side these past four years, and I want you to know I have gotten to know him as very few others have. I have seen him lift and carry burdens of unimaginable weight, day after day after day. I've heard him ask over and over again, what is right for the American people? I've seen him stand hour upon hour, comforting American families who have lost loved ones in natural disasters, wretched acts of terror, and in service to our country. I've seen him go on working for the American people from before dawn to well after midnight, however difficult the challenge, however towering the obstacles, however long the odds. That takes strength. That takes vision. That takes leadership. That takes character. The Bible says, the Bible says, by their fruits ye shall know them. On this night four years ago, on this very spot, I said we felt good having won an election, but even better at having been granted the chance to change a country. Much has changed since we last gathered here, and it has changed because of the resolve and determination of the American people under Bill Clinton's leadership. Under President Bill Clinton, we have forged a new prosperity, putting our financial house in order while restarting the great American jobs machine. We have deepened our ethic of environmental stewardship and redoubled our commitment to protecting God's creation. We have secured our place in the world by helping to bring peace and reconciliation to lands scarred by hatred, savage, hatred's savage hand and by speeding the spread of democracy and free markets across the globe. We have moved to redeem the promise of representative democracy by reinventing the processes of self-government to make them work better and cost less. And we have begun the task of restoring faith and responsibility to the American community by keeping our streets safe and our values secure. Under Bill Clinton, the United States of America is not just better off, it's better. <laughs> CNN declares that at this hour, two minutes past midnight Eastern time, later, the state of Alaska has gone to Bob Dole. But what we savor much more is the opportunity you have given us once again to lift our country higher still. And from where we stand tonight, we can now see the shimmering rays of light that signal the dawn of the 21st century. We see an America that is preparing and empowering all of its people and giving them opportunities to succeed. We see an America in which success does not depend on how others categorize you, but upon what is in your heart. An America in which talented teachers shepherd dedicated students through the best schools in the entire world, where an eight-year-old can pick up a book and read it on his or her own, an America in which higher education is open to all and affordable by all. From our vantage point tonight, we see an America where every child can connect to the information superhighway and absorb the vast knowledge of a small planet, an America where any person with a good idea and the desire to work can enter the new networked economy and become tomorrow's successful entrepreneur. An America where the greatest scientists in the world continue to make discoveries that change our lives for the better. We see an America where the water is safe and the air is clean, whose national parks continue to thrive and delight our families. 
whose toxic waste sites are cleaned up and whose urban brownfields become alive again and green with promise for all our people. From where we stand tonight, we see in America making a transition to a new era, aware of the uncertainties but inspired by the possibilities. We are beginning to see in America scrubbing the stain of cynicism from our national fabric, reinvigorating the civic institutions on which our national health depends, an America motivated not by what divides us, but by what makes us one. And that is why we also see in America where a president of one party and a Congress of another can work together to serve citizens of every party. Let me say a special word to America's young people tonight. This is your nation too. Your claim on it is just as great as those who are older. Please involve yourselves in our democratic process. Add your voices and your talents to our grand experiment in self-government. Ladies and gentlemen, in only a few hours, it will be morning. And across America, from the Shenandoah Valley to Silicon Valley, from Brighton Beach in New York to Oak Street Beach in Chicago, from Tampa Bay to Puget Sound, from the Oval Office in the White House to the kitchen table in your house, the sun will rise on another day in America, another step forward on our national journey. And leading us in that journey will be the man from hope who tonight becomes a man for history. Prior to this election, in the entire history of our nation, from the presidency of George Washington forward, only 13 people have been elected to two straight terms as President of the United States of America. Six of them have been Democrats, one of history's short lists. But tonight, to the names of Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, James Monroe, Andrew Jackson, Woodrow Wilson, and Franklin Delano Roosevelt, we add, we add a seventh name, the name of your president, my friend, President William Jefferson Clinton.